Uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Jason Ryder. I work for the Mississippi Department of Marine Resources. I'm the Oyster Extension Agent. Uh, today, I'm going to talk to you about the status of Mississippi aquaculture. Um, as it's been mentioned, we are late to the party, but we're looking to move quickly and efficiently to catch up with some other states. Uh, I'm going to go over some projects and some regulations, but first, I'm going to talk about some regulations that have changed. So, last year, we updated regulations to help ease the leasing, leasing process for state projects and as also, also individuals. Um, the regulations were outdated, hard to deal with, and they needed to be looked at and evaluated with, with new eyes. Uh, some examples, uh, we removed restrictions to allow harvest to <coughs> harvest in new areas. Uh, this was, they closed the majority of Mississippi Gulf Coast. We said why, a lot of people couldn't answer it, and we opened it. Um, we had the data to support it, and we, we moved forward with it. Another thing we did was uh, we eliminated the two-mile buffer zone from shoreline for off-bottom aquaculture outdated regulation. And then we also allowed the state of Mississippi to take in subleases and lease to private individuals. Um, and then the last thing, that, uh, the last major thing that we did was ease regulations to allow uh, seed into Mississippi from out of state. Uh, now I'm going to talk about some projects that are going on in Mississippi. This first project is a private individual. It's Crystal Sea Seafood. He has a remote set operation. It's Joe Jenkins is the owner's name. Um, he's working with a lot of people along the Gulf. He has a, a pretty decent sized remote setting facility. It has eight tanks. Each tank holds right at 50,000 shells. He can do a maximum run of 400, a little bit more than 400,000 shells. Um, and his setting efficiency is pretty respectable. It's 18 to 90%. And he does take these and move them to his on bottom lease. Um, this is all for him. And he, he, he buys his larger from Aqua Green, which I'll talk about in a couple slides. <coughs> um, going back real quick, one problem with him is he, he has a sole supplier of aqua grades so limits when he can do remote set. Uh, another, another operation that we have is the Oyster Hatchery in Pastor Stan. This is a hatchery that is being funded through a Tidelands grant, which is income that the state receives from water bottom leases. Uh, the DMR administers the grants. Uh, the city of Pastor Stan is constructing the hatchery. Uh, once it's constructed and, and built, DMR will staff and maintain this hatchery. It's, it's just another avenue to, for a hatchery in the Mississippi Gulf Coast. Like I said, we don't have any right now besides Aqua Green, so we're just trying to expand. Um, the city is building that and funding it? The city is building it with Tideland funds, which is uh, water bottom lease funds. That's a state lease. And, and state staff will run it? State staff will run it. And is it strictly for restoration projects, or can it will be for it will be initially for public reefs, but hopefully in the future it'll be for commercial sales. Um, next project is the remote set facility in Gulfport, at the port of Gulfport. Last year we did a test a test run just to make sure the site was feasible. We did two test runs uh, with about 50 million larvae introduced in the t four tanks, right at 140,000 shells deployed. We had pretty pretty decent setting efficiency. Um, we are going to move forward with, with the site this summer. We, we plan to expand uh, into four tanks that each hold around 2,600 gallons. Uh, we do plan to set 18 million larvae a month in these tanks, um, hopefully on a couple times a month. Uh, and then the larvae is being provided by Aqua Green, as I mentioned earlier. We're also developing plans in partnership with the University of Southern Mississippi, the Port of Gulfport, and DMR to build a permanent facility in the Port of Gulfport. This is a large scale facility that will house um, a lot of tanks, a lot of money, and a lot of equipment in this facility. So it takes a little bit of planning and, and finding the funding is a problem that we're working through right now. But are these Restore Act funds? Those would not be Restore Act funds. Uh, Aqua Green is a new inland facility. It's recirculating seawater, sea recirculating artificial seawater um, to grow oyster larvae. University of Minnesota, Mississippi is currently in acquisitions to purchase it from a private individual. We should see that purchase go through at some point in the spring of this year. Once USM takes ownership of the facility, uh, they plan to produce this year anywhere between 18 and 20 million larvae a month, and then in the following year scale up significantly. Uh, this, is a, this is a large facility that has a lot of potential. I uh, hope to see that it, it, it comes to everyone's <coughs> ideas of what it can produce up there. Like I said, it is 30 miles inland, 
artificial seawater completely cut off from the coast. Um, there are a lot of logistical issues that need to be worked through, but I think Southern Mississippi, University of Southern Mississippi has a great plan in place, um, and I, I would like to see it succeed quickly. Um, and then the last thing I'm going to talk about is, a, is the Restore Act grant, which the DMR is working on right now. This is a grant that is going to be funded through BP Settlement Funds. Uh, the DMR has submitted this application through the proper channels. It is being reviewed and will be reviewed through the state. Um, and if it is approved, we hope to get it online later this year or early 2018 as realistic expectations for this. Um, I'm going to cover the basics of this program. It's nothing new that y'all haven't seen before. It's a training program to train individuals interested in off-bottom aquaculture. Um, but in Mississippi, there's not a lot of activity with it, so we have to start from the ground up and move forward. Um, so it's a, it's a two-year project. Of, it's a proposed project that has two phases that will occur over a two-year period. Phase one is a comprehensive training program, and phase two will focus on the profitability and sustainability of off-bottom off moisture farmers. Um, one aspect of, the, of phase one is formal classroom training. This will be educating the citizens on oyster biology, hatchery, hatchery techniques, nursery methods, uh, so on. It's, it's <coughs> sitting in a classroom learning about oyster biology and how to, how to manage your farm. Another aspect is the hands-on training in the water. We are running into some, some issues with, with, with lease areas. Mississippi has submitted a lease to the Army Corps of Engineers for a 75 acre lease area. Um, it has not been approved yet, but we are, we are moving forward with this Restore Act um, training program with the hopes of leasing training areas in, in another state. Um, this is, once again, a hands-on training aspect of it. Get in the water and find out the, how to handle the material, gear construction, bag options, count seed, um, the basics of it. The last the last aspect of phase one is workshops and on-site training. This is where we want to get the experts in, involved so the citizens can ask questions, tour farms, and then hopefully go to some conferences and learn more about their, their, their plans. Uh, the second phase will focus on participants from phase one that choose to begin an orchard farming operation as a transition from the training program to private business operations. Um, you have to go through the, first, through the training program to be eligible to lease to sublease acreage in Mississippi. Um, we think this is a good, a good program to, to go through, so we're gonna require it for everyone getting started. Uh, the second, phase two, is basically focused on business incubation. It's taking their operation and fine tuning it. If they have any questions, get them on, get experts on their farms, see what they can do better and how they can improve. Um, the Restore Act funding is a tedious process. I think we've worked through a lot of the details of it, but we, we feel confident that we're going to get approved through it. Um, now it's, it's the legislator has to approve it and it's passing the funds to, to the state agencies. Um, if anyone needs my contact information, I do have business cards, but I'll be happy to answer questions about any of this if anyone has anything else.